Hello. My name is Ashfaq Schwab, and I'm going to be speaking to the topic, is penumbral imaging mandatory for potential thrombectomy in patients driving beyond six hours? My position is yes. I have no conflicts of interest with my presentation. My objectives are the following three. The first one is the treatment of acute stroke in the delayed time window is very successful. For me, the delayed time window is beyond six hours, but this has to be done in very carefully selected patients. And to select these patients, advanced imaging, especially CT perfusion, is essential. And it's because of selection there, CT perfusion, that we have been able to make such major advances in the, in the improvement and outcome of patients who come in with a stroke in the delayed time window. So my first uh, point is that if one looks at several of these presentations um, of, of studies that have uh, been published in the last decade, and look at the first one, which was Mr. Clean. And as we go through the studies to the most recent one, which was Extend IA, there's two things that become very apparent. The first one is that as time goes by, our success improves. So the, the, the success was about 34% for Mr. Clean with thrombectomy. Now, this is not the first. Uh, um, uh, at the six hours, but uh, this is not the delayed window for the first six hours. As you see, that as time goes by, your success improves from 34 to more than 70%. In fact, those patients who were not treated also did much better than in the treatment window. And I'll tell you why. Because patient selection here was much better. And this patient selection, I will submit to you, was because of advanced imaging in these patients. So here, if you extend this further, so here's Mr. Uh, clean, the number needed to treat was six. If you go into extend I, uh, IA, the number needed to treat is three. And now, the important part of my presentation is that if you go into diffuse three and dawn, these are the studies that are in the extended time window, the number to treat, needed to treat is as good. And the reason for this, I will submit to you, is because these patients were all selected because of perfusion imaging. I'll give you an example as I go along. So my statement here is that for the primary goal, uh, which when, when you're selecting patients for thrombectomy, brain imaging is essential. And what brain imaging does is that it rapidly and safely selects patients for you that would be candidates for thrombectomy in the delayed time window. This is what we do in our setup. If the person comes in very early into a stroke and you're thinking of TPA, then a non-contrast CT scan is sufficient. On the other hand, if you're worried about a thrombectomy, you may do CT and Joe, which is done with most of our patients when they come in within the first six hours time window. Beyond the six hour time window, we always use CT perfusion. And in some centers, mostly in Europe, would use CT um, uh, MR, MR perfusion studies also. But the accuracy increases as you go down. And the time, however, unfortunately, it becomes longer when you start thinking of MR perfusion. CT perfusion is very fast, and I'll give you those examples as I go along. So in our setup, then, this is what happens. Patient comes into the emergency department. We are monitoring their total needle times. They get a plain CT scan. And there's no hemorrhage. The scan looks good, and they're under four and a half hours to get TPA. Beyond that time, and 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 in patients who are under um, three, uh, four and a half hours, also they all get CT and geography to see if there's an arterial occlusion and potential mechanism. Uh, in all patients who are candidates for thrombectomy beyond six hours, what we do is we do CT perfusion. So 
to City Perfusion got multiple software available. We used um, the MyStar for quite some time, but in the last two to three years, we've been using Rapid. And one of the advantages of Rapid is that it tells you the core. I'll give you examples as you go along. And it gives you the penumbra in a very easy manner. Uh, and and it, it comes to your cell phone. So wherever you are, you can have, a, you can have access to the technology. Every single patient in our practice who goes to come back to me beyond six hours would have um, um, uh, software, uh, the, the rapid software available to us. So let me give you a couple of examples from patients that were put into the, um, into the escape trial, which my colleague uh, may refer to in his presentation also. So here's a patient who presented at five and a half hours, had a very good looking CT, had an arterial occlusion, and had decent collaterals. Now, this is where we would stop had this patient presented at three hours or, or two hours and, and taken to a whole come back to me. But part of the reason why um, a perfusion imaging is very good is that it gives you not only in red in here, the area that's uh, irreversibly damaged, but the area that's at risk, which, which is in green here. So a small core, large penumbra, ideal patient, which is likely a slow progressor in whom the angiogram confirms their um, occlusion and single pass, the patient uh, vessel is open and 24 hours later, they're almost back to normal. The NIHSS at the start was 22 and there's a very small lesion uh, to account for their uh, irreversible damage. Another patient also in the trial came in at three and a half hour after onset. You can see that the collaterals are not very good. In this patient, you may stop here and make a decision whether you want to go in to treat or not. In our uh, patient, even that early, you can see that there's a fairly large core with a small penumbral lesion, this patient entered into the study, was treated, and um, the vessel opened up quite quickly, but unfortunately, there's a large stroke, hemorrhagic transformation, and the patient did not do very well. So, yes, if you, um, you don't do penumbral imaging, um, you can get an idea of what, what the brain looks like, but the imaging makes it somewhat easier, especially for individuals who are not doing a very large number of, of cases. I wanted to show you this um, data from the Extend IA, where um, it took them 7,000 patients uh, to select their 70 patients. And what I wanted to show you was that in the large centers, uh, CT perfusion excluded more than 25% of patients because of a uh, um, large core and where the investigators believe that uh, the outcome may not be very good. So what I've been trying to show is that advanced imaging is important, that advanced imaging under six hours may be sufficient when you use a CT. And so the, 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 the two trials that I wanted to quickly discuss was one is the, um, um, the DAWN trial, and the other is the diffuse trial. And remember, in these two, CTP was essential. So for, for Don, uh, with an NIHSS of um, um, more, uh, 10 or more, you needed a core of, uh, of maximum 20. If, on the other hand, the stroke was larger, you could have a, you could have a bigger core. But that was the essential inclusion criterion in these patients. So with that, uh, they were able to show very nicely that in carefully selected patients compared to controls, those who had come back to me did very well with a number meter rate of, uh, of, of 2.7. Similarly, in the diffuse trial, which was a 6 to, uh, to 16 hours trial, the important criterion for inclusion was the core had to be less than 70 mils. And the, the ratio between normal tissue and the core had to be 1.8 um, with a penumbra of, uh, of at least 15 mils. Of course, a bigger penumbra was 
much better. So this is what we do routinely. Here's a large core, uh, I beg your pardon, here's a small core of four mil and, and the penumbra of uh, 125 mils. So an ideal patient, these patients would do very well if you treat them uh, with a thrombectomy in the delayed time window. And as you can see in here, the data coming out of the trial, those who are treated had an excellent outcome. So it is because of this that very carefully, the American Heart Association took this position. That in patients who come in for thrombectomy between six and 24 hours, CT perfusion or MR perfusion is necessary to select patients. That's the key word. There's a lot of discussion around this, but uh, most of us adhere to this uh, uh, recommendation. Now, some would say that, well, by being so restrictive, and I'm sure my colleague would say that also, you may miss patients who may benefit, uh, and, and that the criterion used for diffusion down was too, too uh, conservative. I would say, give the counter argument that it's important to stick with evidence, especially in rigorously um, uh, 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 conducted trials. And there is equipoise for sure. And, and where, is, where there's equipoise, um, and you could, you could do uh, for the clinical trial, right? So to, 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 my, uh, to my presentation, as I come to the end, my third bullet is CTP is the most important advancement in our ability to select patients beyond the six hours time window. And as I end my presentation, I will give you the reasons for it. The CT perfusion is easy to do, it's very fast, and it can be done wherever CT scans are available. And in our, in our experience and others, it clearly defines the tissue at risk or the, or the penumbra very well and gives you a good idea about the collateral growth. Um, also to keep in mind is that many, in many places, ours is a good example, about 40% of our patients coming in for thrombectomy come from centers that may not have the kind of exp expertise that my colleague, uh, Dr. Goyle, um, has, which is for them, simplicity is important that these patients are transferred. Uh, CTP, I believe, is one of the best means of picking these patients who um, are slow progressors and can be transferred to us from long distances. So here's an example of such a patient. Small core, large penumbra, three and a half hours away from us. We're very comfortable in having this patient come to us. You can also look at the hyperperfusion index. The lower the index, the slower their progression. And this patient goes down to 0.1. And so this patient was transferred to us. There's an M2 occlusion. First pass opened up the next day. This very tiny uh, or almost no uh, lesion, although this patient was transferred to us from more than uh, um, at, at three and a half hours away. So the potential disadvantages that some may talk about, I don't believe these are, are important disadvantages. They may be expensive. The time issue is not really a major one. The radiation issue, again, is not, in my opinion, a big one. Most centers have sufficient uh, quality scanners that you can um, uh, do the imaging fairly quickly. And yes, the, the ischemic core may not be very accurately defined, but you know, you're know not doing PET scans in patients as a, as a comparator. Uh, so, so, so I believe it's, it, it's, it's an excellent way of picking these patients. So I'm going to conclude my presentation with the following bullets. Non-contrast CT and CTA are very good for assessment, especially in patients who come in under four hours for treatment. A CT um, a perfusion can be done in most patients, identifies the core reasonably well, um, and is important to identify the, the penumbra also, and can differentiate the slow, slow progressors from the hard, fast progressors. Given all the information that we, uh, uh, we have um, uh, accumulated through the diffusion drawn trials, I do believe that in patients who come in beyond six hours, this is an excellent way to get patients who uh, may be candidates for treatment. So 
uh, to end, there's always room for research. I would encourage my colleagues, Dr. Mayer and Goyle, to do a study to compare patients in whom CTP is used and in whom CTP is not used in the delay time windows. And until such time, I conclude that CTP is mandatory in patients who get treated with thrombectomy and peroxidic I thank you for your attention.